We're only seven games into Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reign as Manchester United's caretaker manager, but we've learnt plenty about the players that Solskjaer likes, the formations and tactics that he likes to use, the players that have surprised and improved under Solskjaer already. Lots has already happened. But we've got Arsenal in the FA Cup coming up. And in February, Manchester United play PSG in the Champions League. We played Liverpool at home in the Premier League. We've got some major, major games coming up. So what would Manchester United's best 11 be in those games? What tactics and formation should we expect to see from Solskjaer? What I'm going to do in this video is run through what I feel is Solskjaer's best 11 at Manchester United so far from what we've seen, what formations we've been using and what formation I think is the best and the sort of style and tactics that I think we'll see against these big teams and the big games. Before we get started, as always, if you are new to the channel, go down there, hit subscribe, hit the notifications button and join the United People's TV community. Make sure you get involved, but let's get straight into it. Obviously, starting goal, obviously, David De Gea. We've said this plenty of times, but David De Gea's shot stopping this season has been sensational. And he's certainly making up for any shortcomings that still exist, and they do exist, inside that defence. Because it's that Spurs game. Absolutely unbelievable performance. But something, I'll be honest here, that I do want to see an improvement from with David De Gea is I feel his distribution used to be a lot better than it is now. I think his kicking especially was far more accurate than it is now. If he can get that, you know, Alisson has got that in his locker and that's why people try and say that he's the best goalkeeper in the league, but he's not. Shot stopping is what goalkeepers do and nobody does it better than David De Gea. But I feel his distribution used to be a little bit better. I don't know whether he's a little bit more rushed on the ball, but maybe I'd just like to see him slow it down slightly and find his teammates with more kicks. Just a little thing, Dave. I'm sorry for criticising. Now at right back, I would love to put Diogo Dalot, but I don't think we've seen enough from him this season so far to put him in that position. Weirdly enough, I think his best game actually came at left back against Brighton last weekend. Now for me, I'm going to put Ashley Young there, certainly head of Antonio Valencia. And this is not because Ashley Young's been sensational this season. I think it's through a lack of alternatives. Because Young himself, I feel, has been quite poor. He doesn't really add too much going forward. Defensively, he seems to be getting caught out of position a little bit too often now. And it's clearly a weakness that we've got in the squad. But so far under Solskjaer, I would put Young down as the best right back that we've seen. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And I think the same really can be said for Phil Jones at centre back. I'm not putting Phil Jones in here on merit. I'm doing it because I don't think Eric Bailly's been good enough there this season. I don't think Chris Smalling has. And Jones is a player that Solskjaer is choosing to play. Now, Jones for me has been responsible for a lot of the head in hands moment in defence. He gets caught out of position too much. Spurs especially had so many opportunities created because Jones was out of position. Now, luckily for him, Lindelof's playing brilliantly and David De Gea's playing sensational in goal. So that's covering up his shortfalls. But Jones has a responsibility now between now and the end of the season to improve his game. It's clearly, that's going to be our weakness. It's going to be right back and wherever Phil Jones is playing or wherever the other centre-back to Lindelof is playing. That's going to be our weaknesses in defence this season. And we need to buck up those ideas. But for me, down in paper, Bayer should be here but I don't think he is on merit at the moment. I don't think Jones is either, but that's the one that Solskjaer is choosing to play. Somebody who is absolutely in that defence on merit is Viktor Lindelov. Surely one of the most satisfying growths of a player to watch because so many people wrote him off. So many United fans wrote him off. But some players struggle in their first year and improve in the second, and Lindelof is a prime, prime example of that. And any reason why this defence is improving for me, is down to Victor Lindelof. Obviously, David De Gea behind him, but Lindelof is dominating as a centre-back. And he's playing out from the back. And Christ, we haven't seen that from a centre-back in so long. I can't remember what game it was, but it was a ball that Lindelof flung over the top. I think it was to Martial, took it down nicely, but a good save from the keeper. Lindelof has the ability to create from the back. And once we've got two centre-backs who are comfortable and confident enough doing that, we're going to see our style of play change so much, but Lindelof, in part, is starting that. Feeding the ball to Herrera and Matic or Pogba in good positions and bridging that gap in between the goalkeeper and midfield and making sure that United don't simply have to hoof it. And defensively as well, very, very strong. He is looking like a hell of a confident player in comparison to how he was last season, and long may it continue. I just want to do a quick shout-out for One Football, who are sponsoring this video. Thank you very much, guys. If you haven't, already got one football's app on your phone where have you been it is honestly a bit of a lifesaver you've got all your news 
all your match fixtures, all your match results, all your match stats, everything Manchester United related in one place. And it's genuinely a good app and genuinely handy. I use it every single day to keep on top of my Manchester United news. So if you haven't got it already, there's a link in the description. Go down there, click it. And the best part of all, it's free. What more could you want? Thank you very much, OneFootball. But let's get straight back into the video. Looking over at left back, obviously Luke Shaw is going to get in here. Now, I feel Luke Shaw has tailed off a little bit. I think he was much better at the start of the season than he has been in the last few games. But I still think he's by far and away United's best left back. And I think Diogo Delot may challenge him there, but I'd rather see Delot challenging at right back. And something I want to see more from Luke Shaw is overlapping runs. He's got Matic, who's playing well when he's in my team, to protect him as a defensive midfielder. So he should be going up and overlapping and giving more overlapping runs for Martial to then expose the space that they create. And that's what I'd like to see from Luke Shaw. But certainly on paper, Luke Shaw is down in Solskjaer's best 11 so far this season. And moving on to the midfield, there's one player who has surprised me more than most under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and that's Nemanja Matic. A player who, you know, I've criticised quite heavily for some time. I felt he was a player who became undroppable under Mourinho, no matter how poorly he played. But under Solskjaer, Matic seems to be far more confident of the role he is playing. And I think that's down to one head of a balanced midfield, which I'll get into in a bit. But Matic is just a defensive general. He's there to sit in front of Lindelof, to sit in front of Jones and try and protect that defence. Now, I don't think we're stopping all the chances at the moment, and that certainly needs to improve. But I feel Matic's form has massively improved since Solskjaer has come in. I think he knows what he's doing. He's benefiting from good management and a good structure to the team because Solskjaer knows the formation he's playing and he knows what he wants his midfielders to do. And I think out of all three of them, maybe, maybe Matic is the one that's benefiting the most. But of course, Ander Herrera is benefiting too. And for me, I think every single team in the world needs an Ander Herrera type player. For me on paper, it looks like we've got the midfield balance really right under Solskjaer. You've got Matic, more static as a player, defensively minded, First thought is to protect the defence and win possession. Then you've got Ander Herrera, a terrier-like player. Tenacious, wants the ball, wants to break up the play, wants to run around and get the ball back as quick as possible. Very keen to press as a midfielder. And that energy is making it good for United and stopping our midfield ever getting dominated. And of course, they free up Paul Pogba, we'll get onto him in a bit, and he can become the creator. It's the most balanced midfield three I feel confident in. You know, sometimes with United over the years, we've seen a good performance and a great midfield setup, and all of a sudden the next week it's changed, changed formation, changed personnel, and you can't build anything on it. Solskjaer knows his team. The team against Brighton was unchanged from the previous game, and it's the first time since December 2017 that has happened. And it's playing a massive role in helping these players, helping Matic improve, helping Herrera improve, helping Pobber improve. And the formation's a big part of it. And Herrera is so crucial to that as far as I'm concerned because he's the ball winner in midfield. He's the one that allows Matic to sit more static and defensive. He's the one that allows Paul Pogba to go up the field and be more creative. He bridges that gap. As a trio, it works very, very well. They all complement each other. And I'm loving what I'm seeing at the moment from Ander Herrera. Now on to Paul Pogba, who many would argue, fairly as well, that he's the most improved player under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's been nothing short of sensational. He really, really has. And something we've seen, certainly, from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, is you look at the tactics and the formations that were used towards the start of his tenure. He was using more of a 4-3-3, with maybe Matic sitting as a pivot, with Herrera and Pogba in front of him as a two. But what we've seen in the last couple of games, and what I feel now is certainly Solskjaer's best formation, is a more traditional 4-2-3-1. We've got Herrera and Matic as alongside each other in midfield, and Paul Pogba more operating as a number 10. That's where Pogba can hurt teams. That's where he can be on the edge of the box getting shots away, linking midfield to attack, finding those runs that Rashford's making and Lingard's making. Because he's playing in a more advanced role with less defensive responsibilities, we're seeing the best of Paul Pogba. And the formation and the setup is allowing that to happen. So all credit to Solskjaer in that respect. And it really is genuinely refreshing as a United fan to, to have a manager now in charge that seems to know his formation, to know the style he's playing. He tried a 4-3-3 at the start of a couple of games. He switched to 4-2-3-1 and he's sticking with it. Sometimes we can change and go more counter-attacking like Spurs. We'll speak about that later. But Solskjaer knows his team and he knows his formation. 
Mourinho chopped and changed. And even three years down the line, you didn't really know the identity. You didn't really know what Mourinho was trying to do. With Solskjaer, it's very clear and it's very obvious. You can get nine, out, nine or ten of the starting eleven pretty much every week now, if not the full eleven. Solskjaer very quickly has established what he thinks is his best team and he's sticking with it. And that's fantastic. And he certainly has a front three that he likes. And Jesse Lingard is a big, big part of that. I think Lingard's best attribute is his movement off the ball. I think only Rashford can rival Lingard for his off the ball movement at the club. It makes it impossible for a defender to defend against him because he can never cover all the space because Lingard's permanently moving. Whether he's in the middle, gone out wide, hugging the wing, on the edge of the box, dropping deep, Lingard's very, very, very good at that. You know his finishing might not be as clinical as someone like Martial or Rashford, but he adds so much into this, into this 11. And for me, he certainly keeps his place in that team ahead of Alexis Sanchez and Juan Mata as well. Lingard is better than both of those, certainly for this style of football that we're playing. And out on the left-hand side, Anthony Martial has made the left-hand side his own. Now, I don't think Martial has had the same sort of upward trajectory under Solskjaer that Rashford has or Pogba has. But I think Martial is getting smarter with his movement. I think he's learning under Solskjaer. I think in an attacking sense, he's operating in better positions, finding better positions, dragging defenders out of positions, making fake runs and then going in the other direction. I think Solskjaer is teaching Martial how to be a better attacker. And I think we're seeing that. We might not see the goals and the assists at the moment from Martial, but as an attacking three, Martial, Lingard and Rashford, it's working so, so well. And because Rashford's playing so well at the moment, we don't necessarily need the goals from Martial. We just need the interlink, his play, his attacking play, his threat. That's enough at the moment. But when his goals and assists do come, can't wait to see that happen. But out of every player that's played under Solskjaer, for me, it's the almost transformation of Marcus Rashford. It feels like another coming of age type run of form for him. Because prior to this, you know, he broke through against Midtjylland. He continued that against Arsenal. And that season was incredible. Then he sort of got shifted out onto the left, played there a few times, shifted out to the right, played there a few times, got an opportunity to play up front when Lukaku was injured, didn't really make the most of it. And you're thinking, can Rashford play as a number nine? For me, that finish against Spurs, through on goal, the only real big chance we had that half. And he took it in a game where Harry Kane didn't take his chances. Taking that one big chance in a big game is what big players do. And right now, Marcus Rashford, 21 years of age, is leading Manchester United. He's on, he might have number 10 on his back, but he is leading. He's our number nine at the moment. And 70 million odd, Romelu Lukaku hasn't got a chance of getting in this starting 11 because Rashford is so integral to it. His runs in behind. Because Paul Popper is now operating in that position, he can keep finding Rashford's runs. Rashford's application, his desire, his energy, his striking, his finishing, his attitude, I can't really see a weakness right now in Rashford's game. And certainly in this style of system that Solskjaer has built so far at United, it's getting the most out of Paul Pogba. It's getting the most out of Lindelof. It's getting more out of Matic than I thought was capable this season. It's certainly, certainly getting more. Getting the most out of Marcus Rashford, I think, that we've seen so far at United. And an overall point I'd like to make about Solskjaer's tactics and his formations that we've seen so far is what feels for me like the proper reintroduction of counter-attacking football. With a front three of Martial, Lingard and Rashford, Mourinho had those three. But rarely did we threaten with the amount of pace that we've got there, especially in big games away. Fergie did it so often, played a 5-4-1 with Rooney up top on his own, sit deep, hit on the counter. But United haven't really done that enough in the last couple of years. We did it perfectly, tactically perfectly against Spurs. And I think this is something we're going to see coming up certainly against PSG. PSG are an incredible team. I don't think United will try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I think United will then play to the strengths that we saw against Spurs and go on the counter-attack because PSG will play with a high line. Liverpool will come to Old Trafford. They'll play with a high line. United can expose those spaces in behind. Play to the strengths of the team. Don't focus on the weaknesses. Now, going defensive at 1-0 and then relying on David De Gea to make 11 saves, Maybe that is focusing on your weaknesses. But I think what we're going to see in these big games coming up is that sort of tactical quality that we saw against Spurs 
and really focusing on the counter-attacking because with that much pace and with Rashford in this good form and Martial and Lingard, you should be focusing on those players. So as I've said, looking at Solskjaer's team and his formation, in a matter of months, he's been able to do what Mourinho wasn't able to do in three years. The identity of Solskjaer's team is there. The defence is looking better, thanks to Victor Lindelof and David De Gea. But we're keeping a couple of clean sheets. There are real signs of improvement. We still need much more improvement from Bay and Jones between now and the end of the season to plug our gaps. And those gaps will always be there. You know, you look at the games against, say, Brighton, against Huddersfield, against Cardiff. Set pieces. Weak set piece defending. Poor concentration levels. Poor man marking. That's going to come, hopefully, with better training on the training pitch. But it needs to come with the players themselves. I need to see Jones, Smalling and Bay step up because Lindelof has certainly stepped up. And that midfield, that midfield is so balanced now with Matic sitting a little bit deeper, allowing Herrera the time to run around and break the spaces in that midfield and win possession back more often than not in the high press and then Paul Pogba to orchestrate and create. That midfield works. And that front three of Marcel on the left, Rashford up front, Lingard on the right. It's like defending against three wasps. You can't do it. They're buzzing around so much, they're moving so often that they're never in the same spot twice. And that's making United unpredictable going forward and rapid on the counter-attack. And with teams regularly playing against United with a high line in defence, that's something we can continue to expose as the year goes on. And looking at that team and his best 11, I think Solskjaer can now compete against PSG. Under Mourinho, we were thinking, ah, oh, bollocks, we've got PSG. Now, who knows? I think we can compete in these games. I'm, not, I'm now not scared of playing Liverpool at Old Trafford. Maybe I would have been a couple of months ago, but now under Solskjaer, it's the United team has refound its identity and it's got a starting 11 and a formation that we're going to stick with because it's working. There's no chopping and changing. We found what works under Solskjaer and he's done it in a very quick time. But what do you think is Manchester United's best 11 under Solskjaer? What would you say the formation is? What players have impressed you with their improvement? What players do you still want to see improve? Let me know in the comments below. And how are you feeling about those games, Arsenal and the FA Cup, where I think we'll make a few changes, but I'll be confident of beating Arsenal. Liverpool at home in the Premier League. PSG at home in the Champions League and away. These are the big games that Solskjaer and his ability to get the job full-time will be dependent on. But for me, he's got the team spot on. And he's got the tactics spot on. So all things considered... It's looking good for United between now and the end of the season. If you are new to the channel, as always, come on, guys. Subscribe down there to United People's TV. Until next time, take it easy.